The Arctic used to be thought of as a place distant and remote, a place that few would ever see, and certainly a place that would have no effect on most of us, our lives, our homes, our families. It is still a place few people will ever see in their lives, but the effects of what is happening now in the Arctic are reaching out to every one of us, no matter where we live on the planet. The Arctic is coming to our backyards, and unless we and the rest of the world's people take urgent action, we will not like what it brings. The Arctic is warming at twice the global average. In recent history, the Arctic has been very reflective, thanks to all the shiny white snow and ice cover. The reflective surface absorbs less heat than bare land or water. In the past few decades, and especially in the last few years, the trend has been for less snow and ice cover in the Arctic. Studies have found that the Arctic is losing 4% of its snow cover a decade, while the ice is going even faster, at a rate of more than 11% a decade. As the Arctic Ocean loses its ice, it absorbs more heat, which in turn leads to even more melting of ice and warming of the surrounding land. As you can imagine, this meltdown brings big changes for the animals and peoples of the Arctic, but it is also going to bring changes to where you live. Many of the world's richest remaining fishing grounds are in the Arctic, supplying people in many countries with fish. These fisheries are changing as fish and creatures they feed upon try to escape the warming or are replaced by other species. Presently, Nobody can predict what long-term impact will result from these changes. Many of the birds, hunted or admired, around the Northern Hemisphere return every year to the Arctic to feed and breed. Some studies predict millions of tundra-nesting birds will be lost as trees begin to grow further north and wetlands dry. While these effects are comparatively fast and obvious, other effects of a warming Arctic are slow and harder to see immediately. Sea level rise is one such effect. The amount of ice lost from Greenland in 2008 would produce enough water to supply the city of Los Angeles for 280 years. The ice being lost from the land is steadily raising global sea levels. The latest science tells us that sea levels will be up by over one meter by 2100. That leaves millions of people in low-lying areas vulnerable as rising waters flood the land where they live and grow food. While the waters are rising, other impacts from the Arctic are also at work. A cold Arctic, particularly the ice-covered Arctic Ocean, helps keep the Earth's climate stable by absorbing excess heat. This keeps the global climate on a fairly even, predictable path winds and rains following regular patterns. An ice-free Arctic Ocean during summer sucks up more heat and warms the atmosphere and surrounding lands in winter, increasing northern hemisphere warming and changing rainfall and weather patterns. In the oceans, further turmoil is building. Ocean currents transport heat and nutrients from place to place. These currents are driven by a complex relationship between different temperatures and different levels of freshness or salinity. The currents determine our local climates. In Europe, for instance, warmer currents bring temperate weather to some parts of the north, while other parts of the world, at exactly the same latitude, are not so temperate. Studies suggest that the warming and thawing of the Arctic slows down the motor behind this warming current, affecting the heat it transports to Europe Meanwhile, back on the land, the faster warming in the Arctic is not just thawing ice, it is also thawing the ground. An amount of carbon, about two times that currently held in our atmosphere, is stored in the top three meters of Arctic soils. Thawing Arctic soil can make a big problem bigger, as it allows microbes to become active and release greenhouse gases to the atmosphere. The soils are not the only carbon stores held in the grip of the frozen Arctic. Vast amounts of methane gas are found in the shallow seas bordering the Arctic Ocean. 
This methane is held in place by the low temperatures of the frozen seafloor. While methane does not last long in the atmosphere, it is more than 20 times more effective than carbon dioxide at trapping heat. Scientists who have studied this issue are concerned that sudden releases of methane into the atmosphere would rapidly raise global temperatures. Without a doubt, taking all of the Arctic impacts together paints a disturbing picture for the rest of the planet. There will be nowhere to hide from such impacts, even if your own particular part of the world escapes the worst of the direct effects, in a world turned upside down, everybody is affected. This is not a picture of what will be, but what could be. This is an avoidable future. If we take the right steps collectively, if we all concentrate on persuading our governments to look beyond tomorrow, to look instead at the world inherited by our children, the world we may see in our old age, we may also persuade our governments to take the necessary steps to rein in climate change, to cut greenhouse gas emissions, and start lowering the increases in temperature in the Arctic.